Hai, Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera anda bersama dengan saya Iza Izlan dalam Agenda Awani dan hari ini kita bersiaran daripada PNB Ilham di Tanjung Tuan Port Dickson bersempena dengan acara Raptor Watch 2014 yang sedang dianjurkan bermula hari ini dan juga esok 9 Mac 2014 dan pada hari ini kita akan bincangkan bagaimana uh, migrasi burung dan uh, uh, hobi untuk uh, me, me bird watching itu sendiri bersama dengan mereka yang pakar dalam ini dan yang betul-betul berminat dengan hobi ini dan uh, bersama dengan saya untuk membincangkan dengan perkara ini dengan, dengan lebih lanjut adalah uh, pengurusi Majlis Pemuliaraan Burung ataupun MNS Bird Conservation Council Chairman iaitu Lim Antia dan juga uh, rakannya koordinator kumpulan burung cawangan Selangor iaitu uh, Mark Eng. Uh, selamat datang ke agenda wani. Okey dan uh, saya akan bercakap dengan bahasa Inggeris agar lebih uh, difahami. Okey, uh, I want to talk to you guys about uh, the bird migration first of all and uh, before that I want to ask you guys how you start liking uh, this raptor watch. Maybe I can start with you, Mr. Lim. Well, for me bird watching started more than 20 years ago. Wow. I I started catching birds the merbo, put them in the cage and then send them for competition. That's how I became associated with birds. And then later on, I realized that putting birds in cage is not a very good thing. <laughs> so I turned to bird watching. You just watch them, you enjoy the plumage, you don't catch and imprison them. Yeah, true. I watch them fly freely. Yes. And uh, what about you, Mark? Actually, um, watching raptors are very challenging. There may be only one species, but within that species, there are so many different types of pattern. And if you study them longer, you can differentiate the male, female, juveniles, uh, different moth like dark moth, pale moth. So that's why it's very challenging. Within one species, many different designs and patterns on your machine. And you know about all this through experience, or do you study prior to joining, or how? Well, experience. We, we, we go as we go along. Field experience is very important. We have to get our knowledge from the books first. But reading books alone not enough. We have to combine with actual field experience, spending hours in the field watching them and try to relate what you see in the books. Mm -hmm. The other thing is sharing your experience with others who have seen other things that are different. Like this example in this event, there are some people from other countries and they also share what they see and it might be different from what we see. So we share and gain further knowledge mm. on the birds. This is actually a very niche hobby because you don't see a lot of people mm. uh, in, you know, indulging in this. Yes. They, they would prefer golf or something else, right, you know, like right, a, a sports right. or mm. go-kart and stuff. Um, And I've only heard about this when I watched that movie, like I told you, <laughs> the big year, like a few years back. Yes, and yeah. to find that there are actually enthusiasts such as yourselves mm -hmm. to actually invest so much uh, in this hobby is very fascinating. Right. So what made you willing to invest so much to travel? And uh, you actually stay here for a few weeks, right? Yes, we stay up to a month here in Tanjung. At Tanjung, not up to a month. So what, what is the push, actually? Well, coming... Speaking for myself, I enjoy the plumage, the beautiful colors and attractiveness of birds in the wild. And then going one step further to raptors, birds of prey. Birds of prey, they represent the most powerful of the bird the family. Birds, yeah. They are very powerful. They are hunters and they are very good with their eyesight. They catch their prey just as quickly as in the blink of an eye. So to me, that represents the apex of power. Mm -hmm. And that's how I became so captivated yeah. with raptors. Okay, and, and when we talk about uh, birds of prey, which right. is raptors, you know, some people think that, you know, these raptors can actually kill humans. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> actually, they don't. They are quite um, nervous of human beings. Because sometimes in their migration path, they are being shot at, right? And there's a lot of misunderstanding about raptors. In fact, raptors is a very good indication of how healthy the environment is. That's another reason why both of us are very passionate about this event. Mm -hmm. Because we talk about conservation of the environment, talk about conservation of the forest. And this is an area where the birds, if they come in late in the evening, it provides a place for them to rest before they start the journey again the next mm -hmm. day. So. Okay, so we would like to know more about the bird migration and how yeah. it happens. and. Uh, Tanjung Tuan itself as a destination and a stopover for these birds, right, for these raptors. Right. But we have to go off for a break. Uh, Jangan kemana, kita akan kembali seketika nanti.
Bertemu kembali dalam agenda ini dan kita masih lagi membincangkan tentang Raptor Watch 2014 dan sekarang ini saya nak tanya kepada uh, tetamu kita mengenai migrasi burung. Okay, Mark, can you explain a bit about the bird migration in a very simple language for our audience? Okay, uh, right now today we are looking at spring migration, which means the birds are migrating from here back north to where they come from, could be Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and they breed there. Uh-huh. Then come to October, they come back here again, and that's what we call autumn migration. So it's a two-way migration for them. And Tanjung Duan is the spot where they pass by on the way back north. Right? Mm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, how, how would you say, how would you describe Tanjung Duan as a stopover, a perfect stopover for these raptors? Uh, Tanjung Duan is only one of a series of many stopovers mm-hmm. for birds of prey, such mm-hmm. as the oriental honey buzzard. Mm-hmm. That we saw just now. Yes. Mm. If they start off in, say, Japan, they travel all the way to mainland China, mm-hmm. down to Laos, Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia. Eventually, they land somewhere in Malaysia, and a lot go over to Sumatra. Mm-hmm. When it comes to spring migration, as we are now doing it, they are mm-hmm. going in a reverse flow. So Tanjong Tuan is only one out of many, many spots of so migration along the way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it is an important stopover as well as a place for them to pass through. But it's not the only one. What, what, what makes a stopover a stopover? Like, what sort of environment is it, the ecosystem? What are they looking for? Oh, one thing is it's forested. Okay. Here in Tanjong Tuan, you have the coastal forest which is very important because sometimes when the bird come across the straits, they are very tired and they, sometimes when we do the count, we can see the bird actually diving down straight into the tree and rest because they cannot uh, fly anymore. What happens is when they fly over the water, there's no hot air, so they have to flap a lot. And when they flap a lot, they use a lot of energy. And when they hit the land, there's hot air, and that pushes the bird up again into the sky and they fly off. Because of the, the yes, thermal? Yes, of the thermal. Okay. And so they catch the thermal and they go up in height and then they fly off. That's how they conserve energy. They don't flap so much. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are some of the species that we can see here in Tanjung Tuan? Mm-hmm. Uh, species of raptors? Yes, the main migratory species that we see here is the oriental honey buzzard. <laughs> they make up 95% of the raptors that we count annually here. Then the other species are the Japanese sparrow hawk, the Chinese ghost hawk, the grey faced buzzard, black buzzard, and occasionally a few peregrine falcons. Okay, about about five species. Yes. So the most common one is the honey yes, buzzard. Yes, that's the honey buzzard. Okay, is there a specific reason why it is the most common, or? It's just how nature it's works. It's just where we observe that the number of, yeah. from the 10 years of observation, we see that this is the most yeah. number that we see. Uh-huh. Reason why, we don't really know mm-hmm. yet. Yeah. You have done, uh, Lim, you have done this for so many years already, right? You, in fact, you are one of the pioneers of this Raptor Watch, right? And now it's coming into... 14th year. It's 14th year. Okay, so from the first year that you have observed until today, do you see a change of, uh, a change of uh, the numbers? Of raptors coming over? Is it an increase or a decrease or is this a graph? Well it's a bit difficult to say because over the past 10 or 12 years of records that we have be- been keeping mm-hmm. we see some erratic movements in the total numbers of raptors. Some years they go high and some other years you see a dip. As to the reason we are still not very sure. Mm. It is at this moment speculation as to whether damage to the environment over in the Sumatra Peninsula, whether that plays a part or not, we don't know. Another factor could be climate change. Mm. As a result of haze, this year we can say for certain, as compared to last year, there is a slow, a slight drop. Slight drop, huh? Mm. Okay, so ecosystem, the ecosystem actually plays an important role uh, yep. to the, the number of raptors coming over, right? Yeah. Yes. Now, sometimes the wind condition also determines where the bird crosses. Sometimes they are halfway crossing the strait and get blown off course, and they may go, be going maybe five miles north of here or five miles south of here, 
And this is where we miss out some of the birds that uh, don't come across. Yes. And sometimes, uh, that is another reason why sometimes the count can be very low. Mm. Because they are away from our sight or okay. our angle of sight. Yeah. But they still do travel. They it's will just still that travel, yes, uh, yes. How yes. fast do they travel, these vultures? Well, it's just at the moment uh, estimate. We know that the streets of Malacca mm -hmm. between Pulau Rupat and Tanjung Tuan, that is the narrowest point. It's about 40 kilometers. Yeah. And we have one year made arrangement for somebody at Pulau Rupat to call us and say that they have seen a group of honey buses just left the Pulau Rupat. So we waited and about an hour later, we saw this group, more or less the same group in okay. terms of numbers. So we were pretty sure that it was the same group. So if it is an hour, then we estimate that their average travel speed crossing the street is about 40 to 45 kilometers per, per hour. hour, depending on the wind condition again. Ah, uh, okay. So, what are some of the what are some of the equipments that one would need to indulge in this hobby? Well, if it's only bird watching, it's just a binoculars. Binoculars. That's all. That's good enough. Yeah. Uh, if it's raptor watching, it's different. It's same. It's uh, the same. Uh, raptor watching, bird watching, uh, just a binoculars. But of course, there are also some photographic enthusiasts which uh, uh, will use cameras, nice powerful cameras. We use them as well. And we use them sometimes when there are lots of birds coming over. We take snapshots of the bird. Later in the evening, we look at it again and try to identify the birds by sexes. Uh, male, female, juvenile. And, and that takes experience, right? To yes. tell oh, yes, yes, from yes. afar. Okay, so basically, um, we will go on for a break, but after this, I want to talk to you guys about uh, how this hobby can actually help conserve uh, okay. the bird uh, yeah. population here. Okay, jangan yeah. kemana-mana, kita akan berhenti bahas kita, kita akan teruskan dengan perbincangan kita selepas. Bertemu kembali dalam agenda ini, dan saya masih lagi dengan uh, Lim Auntiah dan juga Mark Eng um, menceritakan tentang Raptor Watch 2014. Dan uh, saya akan bertanyakan dengan mereka mengenai uh, pemeliharaan dan pemeliharaan burung uh, melalui hobi ini. Okey, uh, Miss Mark, maybe you can tell a bit about the processes of counting the birds. Okey. Um, first of all, what we need to do is spot the bird. And sometimes we are lucky the bird come over very low. And without the binoculars, we can already count them. Uh, How? Uh, by just using a clicker, oh. clicker and just look and count. Uh -huh. uh, there are certain birds that come in a big flock, like the black bazaars okay. or the Chinese goshawk or the Japanese sparrow hawk. And when they come in in a group, we do an estimate. We mm. break them into clusters, 50, 50, 50, 50. 50. Oh. And the biggest cluster we have ever counted is 2,500 birds in wow. one flock. Wow. Uh. But, but they are actually flying around, right? So how do you know you're not counting the right. same one? Very good question. When they are doing the thermal, uh -huh. they mix around, so you cannot count them. You double count them. Uh. So the action of this bird is when they reach a certain height, they will fly off. As they fly off, they fly off in a straight row. Oh, so as they fly off, you count them. Yes. That's very interesting. Right. So uh, that's when they leave Tanjung Tuan, right? Yes, or uh, leave wherever they are thermaling. Uh. This is called thermaling uh, okay. when they drop in the high, in the uh. hot air. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you find that experience? Like, do you find joy in like, seeing like, how many <laughs> birds you count and everything? <laughs> yeah, as Mark said, counting birds it's only one aspect because it adds to your knowledge of what is happening to the numbers and the population. Yeah. But at the same time, when you are watching raptors, you try to sex a bird, whether it's a female or a male, uh, whether it's a know? young. How do you tell? And that sexing and the age, aging of the bird gives you another dimension into the world of raptors. What's uh -huh. happening there? What's the mixture? This year, is it because more males? What happened to a female? We have to answer. Mm. We hope we can answer those questions when we have enough data. Yeah. So, so you're planning to collect the data? Oh, we have been collecting. You've been collecting. We try to. We haven't re reached the answer yet because uh, it's still too early. So, what is the tip, you know, for noobs who actually mm -hmm. want to join? Like, what is the? How do you know which one is male, which one is female, like, or how young or how okay. old? <laughs> quick, quick one, because okay. even even those who are ex very experienced, sometimes we argue whether it's a first year winter, first winter, second uh. winter, but. But as far as male and female is concerned, the male has got a very dark um, edge on the tail ah. and a very dark band on the edge of the uh, wings. Okay. Whereas the female doesn't have that. Right? So that where's a very quick way of seeing whether it's a male and female. 
And then the juvenile, which is not fully adult yet, has got very nondescript marking and uh, their head is usually very pale compared to the adults. Mm -hmm. So have any of you actually travelled out of Malaysia for raptor watching? Oh yeah. Yes. Where to? We have gone to Thailand, to a place known as Chumpon. Chumpon. Yep. It is just along the east month of Ra, a narrow uh -huh. strip of land. And all the birds mm -hmm. that come down during autumn migration, moving south, passes to Chumpon. So we mm. go there and we get good views, we do very accurate counts as well. Do they have like the, uh, the, the same species who travel here in Tanjutor or they have different... They have similar species but they have more species oh. because they are further north. They do occasionally see what we call Amo Falcon uh -huh. which is on the way to India uh -huh. and we don't see them here at all. You know, these are the things that we go and see because we don't see them here. Ah. In fact, we have been going there for five years now, yes. every year. Every year. Yeah. So do you have a full uh, schedule of raptor watching throughout the year? What, what um, is it like? Can you share with me? Basically, migration season. Uh, spring migration is when they go north, is between February and April. Uh -huh. Autumn migration is between late September and December. That's oh. when they're coming down south. So on a serious note, on a more serious note, um, I know this is something that's fine, but I know that it actually also contributes to the conservation of birds because as we know, the ecosystem and even the species of the birds are getting destroyed. So what is your take on this hobby mm -hmm. um, on a more, uh, more important scale as to conserve uh, right. the, the nature? Okay. Uh, my take is that when a person is interested in doing this uh, bird watching or raptor watching, first of all, to help conservation, what this event like here today helps the public to be more aware of what's going on. Mm. And we also have uh, NGOs that's talking about the importance of conserving the forest. Why? Because if we don't do that, birds may not come back this way again. They might find a different route. One, two, they might not find appropriate routes. So awareness of what's going on is very important for the general public mm -hmm. to, so that they can bear more voice in terms of conservation, in terms of preserving what's left of our forest. Mm -hmm. um, Lim? Yes, generally I agree with uh, Mark. And I would only add that uh, the main reason why we continue to hold Raptor Watch every year is to increase public awareness of the importance of this coastal forest in Anjun Kwan. Mm -hmm. So that uh, if ever, and I hope not, if ever there is any move by the authorities to develop Tanjong Tuan, we hope that with the increased awareness of the importance of Tanjong Tuan for raptor migration, then there will be enough uh, opinion and objection to persuade the authorities to reconsider any such plans. Mm -hmm. And so far you have been getting enough uh, support from the authorities? Oh yes, very happy to say that so far the Malacca Street State Government has been very supportive and for that we appreciate mm -hmm. very much. In fact, if we don't, the event will not be like what it is today if not for the Malacca State Government as well as the Negri State Government. Yes. All right. Um, I would really love to chat with you yeah. guys for <laughs> more time, but we only have that much time. Okay. And yeah. I really enjoy speaking to you guys. Thank you so much for being uh, with Agenda Wani today uh, yeah. uh, and sharing your experiences on this Raptor Watch 2014. Thank Baiklah, you. Itu dia tadi, uh, Lim Auntia, Pemerisi Majlis Pemeliharaan Burung, dan juga um, Mark Eng, iaitu Koordinator Kumpulan Burung Cawangan uh, Selangor, membicarakan tentang uh, Acara Raptor Watch 2014 yang sedang berlangsung uh, di Tanjung Tuan, Port Dickson pada hari ini uh, 9, uh, 8 Mac dan juga 9 Mac. Teruskan menonton Astro Ani. Saya Izzah Islan. Assalamualaikum dan salam selamat. Okay, thank, thank you so much. Thank you.